Yeah. And now we can go to like one of the most important sections, which is the clinical experience. Yes. <laughs> because of COVID, I think there's like a lot of uncertainty with regard to <laughs> experience because a lot of people aren't able to go and a lot of people aren't able to get their LORs and they're all really worried and so yeah so there are a lot of questions about this here so let's begin with um, how is a clerkship different from an observership and what do you think is better so that's 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 a that's a very good question so a clerkship differs from an observership in that traditionally or by definition a clerkship involves actual patient care responsibilities uh, actual patient interactions the clerk is responsible for uh, interviewing the patient performing a physical exam and creating or presenting uh, an assessment and plan and so classically that is what a clerkship entails an observership traditionally by definition is exactly that you are in the room observing you do not get to interview the patients. You do not get to uh, do perform a, your own physical exam on the patient or interact at all. And you don't. Know, you can formulate an assessment and plan, but that would be based on the information that's gleaned from the uh, doctor or provider who interviewed and examined the patient. So traditionally, those are the differences between clerkships and observerships. However, the actual experience that occurs uh, on an observership uh, may may be equal to that of a clerkship depending on the location at the discretion of the of the preceptor in the truest sense typically clerkships are going to be done and and only be available to students who are still in school who, who haven't graduated and then once you've graduated you can't do a clerkship anymore so they're all going to be constituted as observerships what happens in an observership will vary based on location and preceptor, but the definition of them will not will not change. So, so in that way, so when I, uh, uh, from a from a, a an applicant standpoint, if I read that a person did a clerkship, then I already know this person is someone who hasn't finished medical school yet, or. If I read that they did an observership, I already know this is someone who has already finished medical school. So beyond that, there really isn't a difference. What's going to be really important, um, because most of the IMGs will do an observership, there really isn't an opportunity for IMGs to do clerkships. And so most of them will do an observership. And the difference is in the teaching and what they are exposed to uh and and a lot of this i was talking about it I was it was pre-covid <laughs> because at this point <laughs> uh the american medical students are doing uh observerships but they're still definitively they're still going to be clerkships because they're american medical students so the title of the type of rotation uh, is not actually important. It is more of a delineation of who is, is where, where you are in your training. Thank you. And uh, how much U.S. clinical experience is required in order to get matched, like in terms of the number of months? Well, before a few days ago, um, my answer would be, I don't know <laughs> because it's different for everyone, but I would suggest at least two. And then uh, just a few days ago, um, we had a, 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 an IMG mm -hmm. who had spent some significant time doing, doing research and she um, graduated uh well over five years ago, very close to 10 years ago, and had no clinical experience at all. And, uh, and she did one uh, telerotation, actually, 
and she reached out and um and and communicated with some programs and she actually received a a job uh, a prelim year um position at a program in the area that she wanted so prior to that i would have said at least two <laughs> but now so so it's 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 wonderful because it's really a testament to uh IMG's really needing to understand that that they are valuable and they are important part of the training and workforce here in america um whether the message of that has not been clearly sent it it, it is it, it is very true and so a lot of the ideas that IMGs have that things are stacked against them for coming is not true. So, so my short answer to your question is one, at least one <laughs> clinical rotation, um, telerotation, uh, it will suffice. Really happy to hear that. Yes. And, um, how can students and medical graduates apply for rotations at hospitals? considering the situation right now? Applying and getting one are two different things. I mean, we are, just, we are not letting non-visitors into the hospital. So at this point, there will not be, not only will there not be IMGs rotating in the hospital, uh, we still have yet to reintroduce our fourth years into the hospital in a number of states, mine currently. And we are not uh, we are not allowing um, rotating fourth years uh, visiting fourth year American students to come to the hospital. So so there's no point um, in applying for an in person hospital rotation um, because pretty much no hospital is allowing it due to COVID we have to minimize and limit non-essential personnel. So our wonderfully essential <laughs> administrative staff who are essential, are, a lot of them are still working from home. And we still are not allowing visitors into the hospital. So families are still there without their, or patients are still there without their families being able to visit. So while I understand the, the perceived um, importance and urgency of which the IMGs would like to have a hospital-based rotation, that is not happening. And it's unlikely to happen prior to, at the earliest, I would say summer of 2021. And that would be um, at the earliest and, and, and very, you know, wishful thinking. So, right. So, so really, the the only possible opportunity that I would think an IMG would be able to do in person is maybe a few select uh, office outpatient offices, and even those, they're not seeing very many patients. Uh, and then again, it's the same thing. It's just not safe to introduce um, mobile people, right? People who've come from other areas in the state, you know, within the, within the U.S. Um, and, and to allow them in, into, into a clinic, into a hospital. Uh, and then again, it's, it's really about safety. Everyone needs to be safe. And that includes the, the rotator, the, the candidate the, who's doing the observership. And it's just an issue of, you know, is it really necessary to put that candidate at risk and even possibly the patients at risk um, for, for the experience? And it, and it is not. That, that is not going to keep us from choosing or looking favorably upon an IMG or 